I hope everything's going well for you. By this time, we're well on our way in a quarter. Uh, I will tell you, session three is, I am most fond of session three. <laughs> That's why it's here up in the beginning stages of the quarter. I cannot tell you enough. Session three, session three, session three. Very, very important. Couple of things in session three. First of all, you have your videos and you have your tasks and quizzes. You've, you're familiar with that by now. Uh, I do have an assignment where you're gonna go to the uh, Association for Career and Technical Education. That is your association. We have to have a national association that has over 40 million members, I'm sorry, 40,000 members, 40 million, wow, 40,000 members. And uh, uh, that organization is representative of all the fields and disciplines in CTE as well as academic educators that join us as well. Uh, it has an annual conference, one usually around December. And the uh, first month, uh, first of the month in December, uh, between the first and the fifteenth, and then it has its advocacy, where they're a capital D. They go to ca at the Capitol, where they actually advocate for uh, Perkins legislation, and they have about a three-day, very very big conference related to developing funds for enhancing CTE. So that organization you need to be aware of. I do believe there's a fifteen-dollar membership for students. If you can find that on the website, they have a publication that comes out uh, monthly and it's called the Techniques Magazine. It has some good information regarding our fields of, between STEM education, CTE assessment, adult learning. There's a multitude of examples that come out in their publications and it's good reading that you might have, uh, that you want to have for your classrooms. Um, there is another exercise in there. One of your assignments is teacher preparation. One of your, one of your uh, reading chapters, chapters eight and nine. Uh, the teacher preparation pipeline for CTE, I think it's critical that you understand that. And when I have you do the characterization, the vocational program characterization paper, this will not be, I will not give you credit if you write me a paper regarding what service area you are in regards to your technical or specific occupation. If you're teaching cosmetology, I don't want a paper on cosmetology. If you're teaching automotive repair, I do not want a paper on automotive repair. If you're doing dental hygienist, for example, I do not want a paper on dental hygienist. I want you to look at the chapter and I want you to look at the program areas that are attached, agriculture ed, business ed, marketing ed, family consumer science slash home economics, and technology education or industrial technology. He will have those highlighted in the chapters. There is also trade industrial and others in accordance. What I want you to do is find your particular occupation. Look at the example that I've provided. If you are teaching automotive and you fall under trade and industrial, I want you to use the program area of trade and industrial and then develop automotive if automotive is a part of it, but it shouldn't be the single one. Look at my example and follow that through, but please understand, this is an umbrella type of picture. I want you to understand the organizational structure from the fields, and then I want you to look at the 16, the 50 in, 15 industry sectors and the 16 career pathways, and I want you to look at those and compare and contrast how those align with the national, okay? So if you have any questions on that, please email or call me on that, but please do not do take this assignment very serious because uh, I do have criteria that I'd like to see in that, in that assignment. Um, student organizations, another big piece. I would like you to know where those student, vocational student organizations or vocational career and technical education organizations go. These offer a great deal of professional development for students and for teachers and the like, and for communities and interest. I mean, people very, very much back these things and, and, and get excited about uh, what these organizations do for kids. So I'd like you to have a good understanding of where those vocational student organizations, vocational career and technical organizations align with what program areas of study are in vocational ed. Okay, the last item that you'll see there is, uh, I, you know, I just expect you to be able to communicate these areas, uh, career clusters, program areas, program areas very, very easily and freely and accurately, okay? And uh, I would like you also, as a closure to that, is to be able to explain 
what the difference might be between a practical arts vocational credential, which would be a single subject credential, and the designated subject credentials of what many of you already have. There may be one or two of you in here that have an industrial technology bachelor's degree with a single subject credential or an agricultural credential. And I need you to understand the differences between those. And those particular single subject credentials would have required that an individual completed like an industrial technology education bachelor's degree and received a single subject credential in the process of doing so. Whereas a designated subject credential, you out here, you have an occupational specialty, you were out working in that area for a long period of time, you ended up coming back, received your educational experience as a background so that you can develop those skills, and in the process, you got credentialed to teach your occupational or specialty only. So you do not have a single subject, you have a designated subject allowing you to teach your occupational specialty. Okay, I need you to very much understand that and be able to articulate that and communicate that to your peers and colleagues as well. All right, hope that helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Thank you.